Hey hey, my name is Paul Links, and today we've been Red Spider Vengeance, which apparently is a free to play game on Steam. But well, oh, that's loud. Let's go. Okay, WDSP. Warning. Scenes of explicit violence. Work of fiction. I haven't read the rest. Okay. Licorice Radiata. A beautiful red flower, also called the Red Spider Lily. But in fact, a poisonous species containing a large amount of alkaloid in its roots. Something more, maybe, about it? The Amaryllis Nightclub. It was the best turnout. A decent number of customers were gathered around the stage listening to Rose wistfully sing. Don't ask who don't, don't ask me who I am. I took a seat in front of stage and sat alone, listening to Rose singing. I glanced at my watch. My husband was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. And there was still no sign of him, and now that makes me uncomfortable. Why did I say my husband? What? Just as I reached for my phone to check if he was alright, Francis finally appeared with his bodyguard, Wong Chi Xing, who we called the Ghost. That's a good nickname. Sorry, I'm late. Huh. <laughs> Mildly can apology, he sat down beside me. I smiled in reply and held up my shot glass. The ghost nodded hello and took a seat beside Francis. Rose had just finished her song and now she was beckoning me to join her. I tilted my head and looked over at my husband. His eyes brightened immediately. Go on, I haven't seen anything on the stage for a long time, Evet. Yvette. Am I? Seems, seems like I am Yvette. Okay. Tonight we have Lil here with us for the first time in a while. Rose welcomed me on stage and Dionys applauded in agreement. I made my way to the stage and began singing the forgotten time. Frost listened intently, watching me over the top of his shot glass. It reminded me of how he always looked when he watched me perform before, listening to me sing from his urine seat. That was back when he was still a lawyer. He was the son of the club owner and would often come along by himself to listen to me sing while we were dating. I grew up as an orphan on the mainland and worked for a triad group, doing unthinkable things for a living. Yeah, you don't want to know that. I had my reasons for breaking out of the group, but when they start up, started after me, it was Francis' father, Yang Kun, who took me in. I'd been known as Licorice to this group, but he gave me the name Event that I go by now. Yang Kun was father to the Red Flower Society, an underworld mob that operated in Kowloon, Hong Kong. I wonder if it's true. In return for my protection, I began working for the Red Flower Society, which is how I met and began dating Francis. When Yang Kuan died, there was a fierce struggle for succession among the officers of the society. Francis had rejected the path his father took in life and was living legit working as a lawyer, but when Yang Kuan died, he was pulled into the struggle too. I told him I went to him to be the successor in order to get things under control in the society. He was his stand, but eventually agreed to assume leadership in the place of Yang Kun on one condition. That condition was that I would stand by and support him as his wife. I know it sounds weird, I know. It was a condition based on his knowledge of my past. I don't know what you're talking about. I had already intended to stand by him if he succeeded the society, but I hadn't expected him to want me as his wife. 
Unlike Francis, who had lived honestly despite being the son of a trial boss, I had no proper roots to speak of and had always lived in the shadows. When I had my share of relationships, I had never expected to be someone's wife one day. <laughs> I mean, I understand you. I would feel confused in such situation, but I greeted his tenors and married him, quitting my job as a singer at the nightclub. Likewise, he quit his job as a lawyer and took up position as the boss of the Red Flower Society. It's been almost six months since I became wife to Francis and moved in with him. Tonight was our first visit to the Amaralis as a married couple. This is so weird. Snapping out of my remembering, I looked up to see a young man zigzagging through the audience towards us, a crushed paper bag behind his back. He wasn't looking at the stage, he was looking at Francis. Love rifle, maybe. Suddenly, there was a sick feeling inside me. Perhaps, nosing my gaze, Francis turned and looked over his shoulder. The young was tossing him quickly. Francis and the ghost leaped to their feet at the exact moment the young pulled his hand out of the paper bag. Boom! The sound of a gunshot echoed through the room. The ghost attempted to knock down the table and jump in front of Francis, but he was a second too late. My husband fell backwards, his hands clenching his stomach. I love that music. A circle of dark red blood began to spread beneath his hands. Snatching my ornamental hairpin and letting my hair fall to my shoulders, I flung it at the elf who seemed to be taking aim for a second shot. The hairpin hit his hand, knocking his gun to the floor. In a second, the ghost pulled his own gun from a pocket. The young man turned and fled. There were screams coming from the audience. The club was overwhelmed with panic. Everyone scrambled to take shelter under their seats. Our members who had been amongst the elders began to shoot the young man. One shot hit him in the leg and he fell to the floor. Stop! Don't kill him! The ghost yelled to those shooting, but he was a moment too late. Another flying bullet hit the back of his head and he was gone in an instant. I ran to my collapsed husband's side. Quite that and in great pain he looked up at me and, gasping for breath, whispered to me. Evet, I am sorry. But the he was taken to the hospital immediately. The ghost and I spent the night outside the emergency room praying he would come through. The door to the emergency room opened and a pensive looking doctor emerged. Unfortunately, he's in extreme chronic condition. We might be able to keep him alive for longer, but it's kinda like he will regain consciousness. It's kinda like he, he will regain consciousness. My head spun as the words hit me. The gunman was clearly out to take down the boss of the Red Flower Society. If I hadn't encouraged him to take over the society, this would never have happened. The ghost leaned towards me and spoke in a whisper. There is something we need to talk about regarding what just happened. His eyes scanned our surroundings as he spoke. He seemed to be concerned about someone might be listening in. Maybe. I gestured to the room where my husband lay. Go ahead! The doctor called on and ushering us into the room left us alone, closing the door behind him. Francis lay unconscious, connected to a multitude of medical apparatus, his face pale and worn. Staying over him, the ghost began to speak. This may well have been an inside job. I can't say much at this point, but I had to send something suspicious, and was in the process of making a move to strengthen security arrangements. I don't know what the gunman's argument was, but I think we need to have someone transporting the watch here 24 per 7 to make sure no one enters. I nodded. 
can you pay security immediately? Straight away. Also, there is one more thing we need to be on guard for. It's likely that you will be targeted next. The ghost continued in a matter of fact tone of voice. So, I am going to organize you a bodyguard. Furthermore, I'd prefer you didn't leave your home for a period of time. I raised an eyebrow his words. But how long would that period of time be? At least until we identify and get hold of the person behind the shooting. The ghost reply was blunt and to the point. Has the gunman been identified yet? As you know, our officers were unhappy with us taking over this society. It's like the shooting was ordered by one of our officers, but I haven't identified who. But if we could identify the gunman, we'd be able to. Huh. I thought to myself. Oh. Oh. Choices. Too bad there is only one choice. <laughs> I will say find a way, right? Why not? Alright. Uh, trust my own instincts. Why not? I decided to do things my way. I promised Francis that if anything ever happened to him, I would take over his responsibilities until a new boss was appointed. You know that, right? Yes, but... I could see the ghost hands up slightly. I know there is something suspicious going on amongst our officers. Regardless of who planned the shooting, they are all trying to try and make the most of the situation. I'll deal with that too, don't worry! And I'll find the person who was behind the shooting and make sure they get what they deserve. The ghost seemed to be torn. He loyally served a young family as a bodyguard since the previous leadership, but clearly didn't know much about my past. After organizing such a people was built, the elder officers to be at the office by noon. I'll check him out and start from there. The ghost don't face no begrudgingly. Right. Will you at least take a bodyguard? I'll organize one for you. If they work for me, sure. It sounds like it's not a bodyguard you're after. What he was suggesting sounded more like a watchdog to me. It's not that I can understand why he was worried. Okay, I'll take a bodyguard of your choice. But let me also employ the help of an old detective friend of mine. Having talked the ghost in cooperating, I immediately called the detective line. Line? Yo, what's up? Waiting on security for the hospital. I headed to the lobby. There were a bunch of dark men standing around in the lobby. Their eyes fixed on the TV and ears listening intently to the news broadcast. It's 9 p.m. last night a shooting occurred at a nightclub in Bangkok. The victim of the shooting was Yang Wing Hao, the leader of an underworld crime syndicate called the Red Flower Society. The killer died on the scene but is yet to be identified. It is possible that Intermont failed to identify as a result of this incident. Subsequently, the Hong Kong police are encouraging the public to remain out of public areas as much as possible until the situation comes down. Notice the ghost and I arrive, everyone turned their gaze towards us. He's alive, but only just. I'll give instructions about how to move forward later. But for now, you're dismissed. Huh. Some of them looked like they wanted to talk back, but noticing the ghost standing beside me with his arms firmly crossed, they scattered about a word. As I went to leave the hospital, an unfamiliar man forced himself in front of the door, blocking my way. He was chubby and sweating profusely. Tell me what attack. Without a moment's delay, the ghost pushed himself between me and the man and addressed him in a low, threatening voice. Who do you think you are? 
The man pulled the police identification card out of his pocket. Ah, police sergeant! <laughs> in charge of this case! Resting my hand on the ghost's shoulder, I stepped in front of him, slowly comparing the face of the man with that of his ID. I'm very sorry, but today is a busy day. Do you think you could come to the office tomorrow? You think I'll let the child go because you're beating? Huh? You've got an ad to find the police! The cop was getting angry. I don't plan running away or hiding at all. I just simply don't have time right now, so I was saying I'd appreciate if we could talk tomorrow. And I can choose whether I want to be interviewed or not, can't I? Or do you have a search warrant? I stared coldly at the cop as my word hit him full force. The poor guy looked like he was about to burst a blood vessel. You, you, you think I'm gonna act how easy on you just because you're a girl, huh? I pulled my phone out of my pocket and began recording the man. Shall I start streaming this online? online? Perhaps I'll accuse you of being the most tyrannical investigator in Hong Kong! Wait, 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 stop, 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 wait! Suddenly the man was all flustered. Okay, okay. I'll be at your office tomorrow, so don't you dare run away. The ghost stared down the cop who was still trying to maintain an aura of calm and control. Oi, 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 What? Yes, previous. Uh, can I? No? So the man was all flustered. Okay, okay, I'll go tomorrow. Overcome the scope got and walked out of the hostel. While waiting for Ryan, the ghost spoke up. Seem to know pretty well how to handle a cop. I recall the face of some police officers I had known in the past. The majority of them hadn't lasted long. Ha! Huh. The ghost kept talking despite my silence. <clears throat> Just try not to wind them up too much. I pretended I hadn't heard him. Upon arrival at the office, I quickly got a call from Lai. It's me! I found you after! I'll send photography in a minute! Thanks! That's a big help! Apparently, all four of them are gathered at a hot pot restaurant! As expected! Okay then, can you come to the house? Got it! <laughs> The four officers had gathered at the hot pot restaurant and were talking about drinks. What a terrible situation! It's if the man dressed in a tasteless purple suit spoke his tone of voice less than Jean. Big B, a shameless money grumbler known to use enemies, a to get his hands on cash. It's gonna be the AJ Brotherhood or the other heavy city, but I can see one day I talk myself with blue like that. Huh? No, what a surprise to us, you'll be out of the dark, sir. A man wearing a jacket or blue jeans spoke up. Look at a militant type who, unlike the other officers, was not afraid to go at it alone. Me? No way! I won't go out of my way to try and create tension with another mob. That sounds like something you'll be more likely to get up to. Yeah, everyone knows you didn't like Francis. Boasting, a cunning man who wouldn't take the lead himself but works for opportunities and signs with whoever seems to have the upper hand. Doc had very hateful at Boasting, only for him to cover his eyes as he couldn't care less. Who cares who did it? They are keeping quiet about the boss conditions of all, but there's gonna need to be a change of leadership over there. A smartly dressed man looking as well tailored as his suit joined the conversation. Shrewd Law, Lou, an intellectual type and the brains of the society, he makes his money in speculative building. Boasting trapped. Great! Our leadership lost a whole six months. I feel like we just went through this yesterday. Guess it means time for the nurse to take up their grateful position in this place. Big big grinned as he looked around at the others. No one is playing brains in the moment like I do. 
Uh, we'll be thinking in no time if we left it up to you to stay today's trip. Big Fleet B. Slid up as dog says mocking words. What the shit? Should do about to them. Yeah, hey. No one's time for our see on you up at the meeting, right? right? It's our chance to show the girls we have no intention of doing as he tells us. Go the hell, oh, I'm in! No complaints here. Ah, uh, full suit if that's what you're all doing. Oh, right, it's a problem then. Elston and Familiar Song started playing. Big B fished around in his pocket and pulled out a cell phone. A text, huh? Who could this be from? Lily! Which Lily could possibly want to see me? Big B joked as he opened the message, but his laughter faded quickly as he read, read the content. What the? Sure, Lou tried to peer at the message that had made Big B aloud, but he quickly pushed him away. A throwman's fault, Big B mustered up the courage to speak. Hello guys, I'm gonna have to go to the office after all. What happens, Big B? Sorry, can't talk about it right now. I'm still planning to take over the boss for Fat for sure. With that, Big B hurried out of the restaurant. What on earth happened? Yeah, Billy, it wasn't the proudest one of all stage name. That woman, huh? Though he leaned back a nostalgic expression on his face. He was definitely favorite of the world boss, but I've never heard of her coming out of his way to perform. As because Uncle Dilly sent the tanks, it doesn't really mean it was her. I guess could make her do it. Who does he think he is? Is he? Wait, who does he think is he doing something like that? Come down! Shirley brushed over dog's head, shocked reaction. There's some point speculating without any concrete information. It's a shame he couldn't stay on board, but there's still three of us here. We've clearly still got the advantage. Shirley was unmoved. A moment later, Boston got a text message. Scanning the message, Boston scratched his eyebrows for a moment for regaining composure. Dog head and short those eyes were fixed on Boston, waiting for reaction. No one spoke. All of a sudden, Dog head's phone went off. Who is it? It's Yvette! Boston, so if you react and put him on the phone up? Dog had recently pulled out his cell phone and showed it at Boasting. Taken by surprise, Boasting stared dumbly back at Dog Head. Everett wants to talk to you. Sure, though, did a dumb take at the name of Yvette. <laughs> what is it? Boasting picked up the phone and spat out a card reading. I heard you've got a streak in your place. Shall I tell that to Dog Head? See something is surely expression depending on Angry's code. Alright, uh, be right there. Handing the phone back to Dog Head, Boasting stood up and walked out of the room. What kind of magic was that? Are you wedge? Yeah, something like that. I'm still meeting with Zang playing my crystal ball. Even if you quit, you'd better do it the right way. Can you make it over here? Dog had I true love for a reaction. Now sure Dog had a sober expression on his face and seemed a lot more interested in hearing Dog head out. Dog had hang up the phone with a sign. Got it. I'll be heading over too. Sure Dog stared at Dog head surprised at his response. As you just heard, I'll be heading to the office too. That woman, she's a piece of work. What are you gonna do then? <laughs> well, there is nobody hanging out here by myself. Right, I'll head, I'll head there too.
within an hour all four officers had arrived at the office. All four officers stared me coldly, clearly trying to guess what I was up to. Realizing I tended to take full control of things myself, it seemed the ghost was content to be a spectator and leave things up to me. It was Big D that broke the ice. You must really be happy after what happened to your boss last night. At first glance, he almost looked genuine. But wasn't there a ghost there when it happened? How did the shooter even get first? Bit of a weather's a good guard, don't think? The ghost showed no intention of responding, his arms firmly folded in his face, expressionless. Doc had jumped in. There is no point being a fight over something that's already happened. I'm more interested in knowing what kind of state the boss is in now. Does it look like he'll be coming back? Quite bluntly, he probably won't be. We've been told it's unlikely he'll regain consciousness. The officers were clearly taken back by my words. They must not have expected me to openly admit that Francis would be coming back. Uh, so, what you mean is you're gonna need to decide who takes over as the next boss? Most things words were crude and careless. He seemed to have gotten overconfident, thinking I'd be more vulnerable without Francis protecting me. A shameless male chauvinist. No! I stopped and scanned the room to see how each officer would respond. Big D had a devilish look on his face. I could tell my words had irritated but stink. On the other hand, Doghead and Trudeau at least seemed calm and looked like they were ready for me to continue. I took a sharp breath and continued speaking. I'll be taking up the Red Flower Society. I could see all four of them visibly catch their breath. The ghost was the only way one able to keep a straight face, but I could tell by the way he unconsciously crossed his legs that he was taken back. Big B, what did you say? Doghead, what the? Big B and Dog had raised their voice in unison. I did. God damn it. Okay, Boston stared at me as if unable to believe what just happened. Sure, Lou, however, looked like something had clicked. I get it, so that's what was going on. Sure, Lou's tone of voice was twisted and probing. We just hooked up with Francis so we could take over the city, didn't you? A wasp spider, that's what you are. His words suddenly triggered memories from my past. My thoughts wandered back to my past for a moment, but I quickly refused to the present on the present. Refocused on the present. Ironically, the rest of the officers seemed shocked at True Lou's choice of words. Suddenly the ghost and voice cut through the silence. True Lou, what's your words? No, you don't have to just do as she says, huh? True Lou looked across at me defiantly. Sorry, I didn't put it quite right. I was spider would normally wait for a prey to get caught in her land, but this woman's going out of her way to get her arms to the bench brazen. This killing mind won't have been her doing. Everyone's gaze returned to me. So far things were going as expected. I said to play the strong card I prepared for this moment. Before the last boss passed, I was the one who was given the dragon seed that was right for succession of the Red Flower Society. Even after my husband first took over the site, the seal was still in my possession. I pulled the drum and seal from my pocket. The person holding the drum seal is the rightful head of the Red Flower City. I don't think I'm giving this seal to anyone else. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Boasting's eyes were aflame with anger. This is the first time I've heard of the walls due to the drum and seal. Big B jumped on board. Same! And we can't do really it! Look at them more, making some of the balls just because they have a sweet seal is speechless! I ignored them and spoke to the short look. The reason he looked back Francis is when he took over the set was because he was the one holding the bra, the bra, the, the dragon seal. I'm the one actually holding it now! 
So if we go if you're not, you can reject me assuming the leadership of society, can you? Shurlu was at a complete loss for words. In contrast, though, Kael burst out laughing. <laughs> That's a good one. She's totally right. Shurlu, out of all of us, you're the one that you asked to support her in assuming her leadership. I turned toward Blockhead. And what about you? I suppose you're against me taking over leadership on the side too? Doghead looked briefly around the room and replied. I couldn't care less the drunk is used up, but after seeing you take command today, I think you seem to be the smartest person here. I'd prefer to go with your leadership than that of any of the rest of the slot. Just as far as when the previous boss died, Doghead was the leading candidate to assume his position, but Shurlu had backed Francis to get Doghead out of the way. It was no wonder Doghead didn't like Shurlu. It was exactly as I had thought. Doghead would stand with me if I proved to him I could outwit Shurlu. And with knowledge of both things witness towards Doghead, I knew that both things wouldn't go out of the way to get on the wrong side of me. I checked to see how both things would respond. What about you two? Baby was tainted and ready for this, but Boasting snapped a short reply. Fine. If you have the dragon seal, then it can be helped. Dumbfounded Big B stared at me with his mouth open, and there was no way he had the guns to stick to his guns alone for. I guess it's unavoidable. I'll oh, accept it. But if I lose this is scam, I'll be out here in no time. I had succeeded in my first time to get the officers under my control. Yay! I guess. You know what? Uh, let's end the episode here. For now, we enjoyed it. We are getting into the underground of the Hong Kong society. So far interesting, hopefully it will be even more interesting in the next episodes. So, hope you enjoyed this one, hope to see you tomorrow, bye bye.